And you should also know that omega-3 oils, being polyunsaturated, are also oxidation prone, perhaps even more than their omega-6 counterparts. And even when multiple antioxidant compounds are added to omega-3 oils, they still oxidize. Take this 2020 study which found that while adding a cocktail of antioxidants did indeed reduce the oxidation, it didn't eliminate it. Levels of oxidation were still significant, even just over a few days. And this Australian study, every brand of fish oil tested had detectable oxidation products, with 38% of samples even failing a voluntary industry standard. And it's likely the fish oil oxidation is one of the main reasons why the vast majority of studies looking at fish oil do not find any benefit. In fact, 16 of the 18 studies in this review listed here did not find any advantage to fish oil supplementation. This is likely because when we consume oxidized oils, we absorb the oxidation products. The more oxidized the oil, the more we absorb. It doesn't matter whether it's a fish oil or a seed oil. Compare the absorption of oxidation products from a low oxidized oil and a highly oxidized oil. And have no doubt, circulating oxidation products are harmful to our health. It's also important to know that the combination of elevated blood glucose levels, such as seen in poorly controlled diabetes, effectively multiplies the dose of oxidation from these oils. Compare the absorption of oxidation levels in those with normal blood glucose levels to those with high blood glucose levels. And not only was the amount of oxidation product absorbed much, much greater, they remained in the circulation for far longer. Eight hours versus three days, nine times longer. And the combination of fructose containing sugars and oxidized oils is what makes so many processed foods literally toxic to our brain. Most processed foods contain at least one and commonly both of these ingredients. Have no doubt, processed foods are absolutely implicated as a major cause of Alzheimer's disease. Let's take a look at what happens inside your brain to see how processed foods can be so damaging. Clumps of damaged proteins known as beta amyloid plaques define Alzheimer's disease, being thought to cause much of the damage. And until relatively recently, we could only identify beta amyloid by microscope after death. Now, however, it can be visualized while still alive. Here you can see advanced brain imaging demonstrating the brain of an Alzheimer's patient riddled with beta amyloid. These beta amyloid plaques are aggregates of individual beta amyloid peptides. But these peptides don't naturally just clump together. Rather, they have to be damaged first. And this is where sugar and seed oils come in. In the presence of sugar, these beta amyloid peptides can form early glycation products through the process of covalent binding or chemical attachment of sugar to the peptide. And glycation of the beta amyloid peptides makes them prone to clumping together and progressing to advanced glycated end products, which are essentially what the beta amyloid plaques are. And this final step can be enhanced by oxidative stress. The same oxidative stress experienced on consumption of oxidized seed oils. The end result, these beta amyloid plaques, which are characteristic of Alzheimer's disease, are scattered throughout the brain.